empowering you. It is not just take, carry that uh, preacher's message and throw it in the dustbin. Because it's not what it's not what God wants for you. It's not what God wants for you. It's there in First Corinthians fourteen. If you read from verse one to um, to fourteen, it's talking, talking about prophecies. It says that any prophecy that is not a, a, is not a defying, that person should keep quiet. The word of God, when you when, when you finish hearing pre, a, pre, a, pre, a, a preaching or a message, you are meant to feel powerful. You are meant to feel. Um, you are meant to be. be you, are, you are meant to be to be reminded. Of your godliness, of how much God loves you, of how much you are actually a God, of your partnership with God. These wicked preachers, they don't see all this part in the Bible when God says that you are co heir and joint heir with Christ. They don't see it. They don't see that part where the, in the Bible says that you are the righteousness of God. And the goal is that the mentality of that preacher, because of the low self esteem and the wickedness of that preacher, they put fear in you so that you can run after them and be subservient to them. That's why I see people, they don't, they, 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 they hear a preacher, that's why you have to be careful of a preacher that you listen to. They hear a preacher that is only telling you about the judgment and the wickedness of God, how God is a consuming fire. Why? Pastor, what did I do to you? So, I grew up um, in, a, in, a, in, a, in an environment like this until along the line, I saw that this is not helping any matter. I already have enough condemnation going on on the inside of me. I don't need any other person to add more to it. And let me tell you the truth. If you focus on the love of God, you see more of the love of God. If you focus on how you, how you are so much in sin, and you need to be confessing your sin every day, every day, every day, every day, every day, and that's your focus, that is what would always be your Look at what the Bible says. That's what will always be your portion. Look at what the Bible says. Matthew chapter 9, verse 29. Matthew, because you're saying, ah, Pastor Peso, you are trying to cajole us now so that we can just be doing rubbish. No, I'm not so. I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. I'm not trying to cajole you so that I can't go and be doing nonsense. I'm telling you the truth. This is the truth. I know that it is difficult for some people to believe it because... They have been fed with lies for many years. Before I even go to that, um, before I go to that Matthew chapter nine, let me first of all show you something. In um, what was it called? Uh, Jeremiah forty-two. Jeremiah forty-two verse five. Jeremiah forty-two verse five. The Bible says that I had heard of you only by hearing of the ear. Okay. But but now my spiritual eye sees you. Look, let me read another version. Let me read the uh, message version. Job is what I'm talking here. You see that I admit I once lived by rumors of you. A lot of people are living by rumors of God. What does that mean? The God that one preacher preached to them. They are the God that they know for themselves. Like my own God now, my God that me I serve, is a loving God. He loved me die. Like there's nothing I can do for him to 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 be angry at. It's, it's not possible. The kind of God that me, I believe in, is the kind of God that when I am, as my prodigal son will go out, go and mess up and come back and he will still embrace me. But you, you can have the kind of God of Elijah that will be sending out fire on top of your, of your head. That's your business. And I will tell you why you need to, be, you, you need to, you need to um, pay attention to what you, what you allow yourself to believe. Look at what the Bible says. In... Um, uh, what's it called? Matthew chapter 9 verse 29. He says that, Then Jesus Christ touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith and trust and reliance on the power invested in me, be it unto you. Write that place down. Write that scripture down. If you don't hear anything, write Matthew chapter 9 verse 29 down. Then you now on your own sit down, close your door in your room, only you interpret it to yourself whether i'm trying to sweet talk you i'm trying to lie to you look at what the bible says it says that this is the story of uh, two blind men that came to jesus and they said jesus grab mercy on us heal us and look at how jesus christ answered them he prayed for them he touched their eyes that's i want to read uh, 
message version now. He said, Jesus Christ touched their eyes and said, Become what you believe. Eh? Yeah? So it means that what my life is today is as a result of what I've been believing. If I've been believing that I'm a victim, if I've been believing that uh, God is God is chasing after me to kill me, some people have the belief system that ah hey if God catch me eh, the way you will, you will roast me because of how sinful and how bad I am, that is not God. No, that's not God. And because you are believing that, that's why you're seeing all kinds of negative things around you. God is loving. He loves you. He will leave the 99 to chase after you. That's the God that we're talking about. He loves you so much that even while you are yet a sinner, he died for you. Romans chapter 9, verse, verse 6. Can you imagine that? He, he took a big risk. He, he didn't even think about it. That, okay, this is my death. Now, what if, what if glory did not accept me? What if Elizabeth did not... You know, he do, did not take it. Can you imagine you go and pay school fees down for someone? For a girl that you want to date. You are not, you're not married, you, you see. Well, let's just see whether I will marry her. But in the course of me, I've not even toasted her. I'm just in my mind. I'm crushing on her. So I now go as a guy to go and pay for uh, the girl's school fees from beginning to the end. The best school fees. Bought books. Pay for hostel, pay for all the things she needs, she needs and everything. Then I now went and start and say, how far? Babe, I like you. I've been crushing on you. Will you, you know, let us go out. And the girl now say, mm, okay, 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 let's go out. Then you guys now went out. Then it was in the midst of you guys going out. And I said, do you know that I've actually paid for your entire school fees from beginning to the end and you don't need to pay anything and after school i've made provision for a job in nmpc in Orlando, in, she in chevron for you so that you earn at least two million naira per month salary after your graduation and not just that i already prepared a a duplex for you brand new seven bedroom detached in banana island and three two g wagons parked in the compound ah, ah. you're like are you okay you i mean you are not even you don't that down like you're not even thinking that maybe i will not even say yes <laughs> well <laughs> i'm a mumu they call me mumu i'm a mumu is a mumu for you that's the kind of god that we serve he loves you so much. He laid down his life for you. If somebody laid down their life for you, do you think that they will now watch you, watch you rot and suffer because of some kind of mistakes? You think Jesus Christ is surprised by your mistakes? You gotta be you gotta be kidding me. You think he doesn't know you're gonna make mistakes? So what am I saying? When you focus on God's love, that's more of what you see in your life. He loves you. You're a love child. He loves you so much. So much. Look at what the Bible says. In, um, um, what's it called? In um, NLT, it says that because of your faith, it will happen. So, a pastor, eh, some people have been saying, some pastors will say something, some, some people even see some prophecy and say, Ah, I see doom, doom, doom is coming, evil, catastrophe, danger, death, this, -ha, he. and you be like, hey, hey, he's a man of God, he's a man of God, he's a man of God, he sees vision, he sees vision, hey, ooh, ah, he, ah, bah, it's come to pass, hey, he told me all my destiny, he told me what happened to my great grandfather, and my grandfather, and my neighbor, and on my street, and my chicken, he told me, he knows, if, ah, that thing that he said, he, 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 he must happen, because he's, he has told me the food that it's last, last week, Bible says that, as you are believing it, mm, Peke, it just it will just happen to you like that. There is no. It's just it's just copy and paste. There is nothing like um, it's, it may not. Happen. You already believed it. But when you hear all those kind of nonsense, um, 
fearful prophecies and, and messages. You say, in the name of Jesus, I'm an overcomer. <coughs> I live victoriously. Jesus Christ loved me and has and has died for me and has paid for everything for me. Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5 17. 2 Corinthians 5 17. You say, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. It's a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So if you are in Christ, congratulations. But if you are in Christ and you still don't believe it, then this is what the Bible is saying. It says that, it says that in that same Matthew chapter 9, verse 29. I want you to be reading that scripture regularly. Matthew 9, 29. Matthew 9, 29. Um, um, NIV then he touched their eyes and said according to your faith will it be done to you according to your faith will it be done to you sorry let me give you something to close to close this now 1 Corinthians 15 verse 1 1 Corinthians 15 verse 1 to 2 moreover brethren I declare unto you the gospel which I preach unto you which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which ye also are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preach unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. What, what is he saying there? He's saying that the what will help you is to continue to believe what you have believed. Not that you believe it now, and tomorrow you throw it away. You continue believing what you have believed. You continue believing this thing. Look, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I have to say this one again. I just went quickly, you know, um, clear this thing because you know I'm trying to clear this thing. I'm trying to clear because I know that some people will still have something in their mind and say, ah, this pastor is just talking nonsense. I know, I know, I know. That's why I'm showing you the Bible. Okay, let me tell you something about the Bible. In the Bible, there are all kinds of things inside the bible because god inspired is inspired the writing of the bible however is still subjected to the person who is writing for example i can tell you all to take notes of what i'm saying right now by the time i check your notes on what i'm saying right now some of you will write what i did not see what i said what you think i said yes or no yes, sir. you cannot write the same way is based on your level. It's also based on how fast you are, your exposure, your depth, your closeness to me. That ah no, this is what Pastor Paul is saying. This is what he's not saying. You, it, 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 it comes a lot of things. That's why you need the Holy Spirit. That's why the Bible is filled with all kinds of examples in different ways. So the is it boils down to which one are you going to believe? The kind, the, the example you have seen of God in different areas. For example, in that area of the prodigal son, does that look like a wicked God to you? So, so I, I leave that to you. Look at what the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 15. I'm saying this because if you want to become born again, if you want to become new birth, if you want to receive anything from God, this is how you do it. This is the anatomy. This is the secret. This is why a lot of people can never receive anything from God. It is too simple for them to believe it. It's too easy. And can you tell me I just believe and just um, confess and that's all? It's too easy. You're not even telling me to to uh, you're not even telling me to bring to sow seed. You're not even telling me to sow seed. Uh-uh. And you tell me to sow seed, bring all my life savings. Uh-huh. Let me do something that will cost me something. Will cost me. Then I will know that it will work. You know how Babala will tell you that you have to get, bring, go and bring your mother, and your father, and your auntie, and your uncle before you can get something done. But God is not a Babala. He's not an herbalist. He's a loving father. So then, um, look at what the Bible says. 2 Corinthians 3.15, it says that, Yes, down to this very day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies upon their mind and hearts. Can you imagine that? Anytime we're talking about Moses and what Moses did and the writings, there's a veil on in the hearts of people. 
Okay, this is Paul talking here. He now said in verse 16, 2 Corinthians 3, 16, But whenever a person turns in repentance to the Lord, the veil is stripped off and taken away. Another version says that whenever anyone turns to the Lord, whenever you turn your face to God, God removes the veil. But when you are talking about Moses and what the preacher is saying, when you are focusing on a man, you are focusing on what somebody said, not your relationship with God. For example, the Bible did not tell you the kind of, the kind of car to buy or the kind of platform to do service like we are doing right now. You don't see it anywhere in the Bible that you should do Zoom or you should use WhatsApp to do service. It's common sense that told you that. You, so you cannot tell me that because it's not in the Bible that you not do it. There are some things that you have to know it based on the relationship we have with, with Jesus. Not that um, I did not see black and white in the Bible. That does not mean that you should do anything. But that is why you need to have a relationship with Jesus. It's more important. John 14, 20, the Bible says that I will send you the Holy Spirit that will teach you all things and guide you into all truth. That's why you need to actually have a relationship with Jesus. So he's saying here that when you turn to Jesus, you, your, the veil will be removed from you. The veil will continue to be there when you keep on looking at other places and other things. Focus on Jesus. Focus on Jesus. My prayer for you today is this. That the Lord open your heart and your eyes to see the love he has for you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You will trust that love. Amen. You will rest in that love. You will believe in that Amen. love. You will, you, will, you, will, you will just relax yourself in that love. In the name of Jesus. And as you relax yourself in the love of God, all the calmness, peace, and, and benefits, blessings that come with it, your life manifests it, manifest them in the name of Jesus. It is done. All right. Thank you for coming. I love you. Good night.